Hello, welcome to House and Home Chat, Real Estate Real Talk with Dina and Chris. I'm Chris Breitenbach. And I'm Dina Mathis. Welcome to our program. We've got an exciting program scheduled for you today where we're here from ABC Fine Art West. We're with Sylvia Rhombus, who's joining us, and Sylvia is a friend of the program. She's been with us before a whole year ago when we started this podcast, but today we've got Sylvia joining us from the West Gallery. He's going to be sharing some tips with us on how to curate an artful space. And then a little bit later in the Real Talk session, Dina and I will be discussing the area where we're at. So today we are over in the West End, and the West End is just filled with so much history um, and fun facts. And of course, we'll share the real estate trends. So Sylvia, welcome to our program. Welcome again. back to our program. It's so wonderful to be here. Uh, I think our segment was the first one that was done. We did it at our other location we on did. the east side. We did. So we are in a space that's bigger, better, and even more awesome than the space we were in before. Um, and there's many opportunities here to show you um, what a curatorial, uh, the aspect of my uh, job is and how I make my clients' homes. Uh, I curate their art within their environments to make them uh, that much more beautiful and artful. It's a dynamic space. It's it just, it's beautiful. It is I mean, your space. eye just takes you in so many different directions here. Um, lots of beautiful um, things to look at. Tell us a little bit about the history, actually, of, of this space, if you would. So this space, um, it looks totally different than the way that it looked. It's it, when uh, my sister, Lita Spanos, first found this space, um, and she said, sis, I want you to see it. Uh, it, it, you know, this new space that's going to be our, our new location. Uh, I was flabbergasted because it was an old <laughs> warehouse. It was an old popcorn machine warehouse. So did you and not see the vision? Um, I, I did after she explained okay. it. Okay. Um, but everything, yeah. but the, what she saw in it was the opportunity for a grand open light space, had beautiful windows, beautiful space, um, a simple layout that affords from a gallery and a curatorial perspective, allows you to do so many different things to showcase our artists because we have hundreds and hundreds of artists. So I did see the vision. Uh, once I got past the six inches of dirt <laughs> on the floor and the blacked out windows, but um, it's truly, uh, it's a labor of love. Um, uh, leads a, uh, you know, a, quite a financial endeavor uh, to create this space, but it's all honoring our artists and their work. And we felt that um, they needed to have a space uh, that we were proud of and that would showcase their art to the best light. Well, obviously we haven't seen it before, but what you've done is amazing. Yeah, it we didn't get to see the before pictures. Certainly does highlight the art and the artists. Yeah, it really, it really yeah. does, really does. So uh, we're, we're glad to have you here and it's uh, fun to talk in a different venue. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so yeah, we were at the East location before we're down here on the West End today. And why don't you just tell us a little bit about how, what are kind of the first steps as far as uh, creating or curating that, that space? So I'll Where just- Where would you start? Yeah, so, uh, you know, because for me, my clients have been collectors for many, many years, mm -hmm. and not just collectors of art, but collectors of things, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of furniture, things that they possibly could inherit. So whenever I curate in my clients' homes, I always take a look at what they have. I get a real feel for their vibe, and, um, you know, and, and a lot of times, it, you know, if they are my clients and my collectors, I kind of know what's going on. So I take all that into account, and what I do is, um, I try to take a number of things into consideration. So it's the volume of the space. Okay. One. So that is a really important thing because you have to play with scale in a home. Right. You That's know, and it's just like it's just like placing a window in a room, you know, from an architect's perspective, you want that window to not only to bring in the light, but you also want it to balance the space in the room. So I look at that. Sometimes um, uh, a, a, you need an, a large art piece because you, you have, you know, you have the wall space and you have a large window next to it. And, you know, you want to kind of balance those things. Sometimes you want a rhythm. So um, instead of one large space, uh, I'd like to, you know, do a series that okay. will kind of draw the eye towards another focal point. Right. You know, the art is a focal point, but maybe um, a great example of that would be in a hallway. 
So okay. you don't want to put, you know, something that has a ton of detail in a hallway. You want to put something that gives you that rhythm of walking oh, towards nice. so something. It's, it's else. a progression. And it's a progression. Yeah, yeah. And always, always. I, if I can, I always put a great piece of artwork at the end of a hallway oh, because it's a great yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. It allows you to go either right or left into another space, but you don't ever want to stop at a blank wall. I love you that. You want something there. So you want a beautiful light, always have a light, okay. and then a piece of artwork there. So, uh, you know, that's a consideration. Then uh, the, you have the consideration of sort of the style of the art. Not that, you know, I like to stay within one particular style, but if a client has, um, you know, very traditional vibe, Sometimes you want to take it up just a notch okay. and give them something that's just a little bit more, you know, a, 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 maybe has a little bit more of, of a contemporary feel to just it. A just a little pizzazz, just a little pizzazz, push, right? but not like not, not not like you're going from, you know, from uh, <laughs> you know portraiture, you know, very traditional old world portraiture to you know a slash. Of black yeah, wine. Yeah, yeah, you, know, but, you don't want to shop. Yeah, but, but, but you maybe maybe you progress from portraiture to you know maybe bumping up the colors a little bit and doing some kind of mid late okay. more contemporary still mm -hmm. life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's still an it. Okay. But it's not like the same it. Okay. You know? So uh, I you know so that that's kind of a consideration. And um, uh, then the other consideration is what does the client love at okay. that point in time? You know, mm -hmm. what are they you bring them into this gallery and there's like the world of art here. Yes. There's so yes. many things. And it's by bringing people right. in here, um, you get this feeling for the vibe. They can go from place to place and say, you know, I love that and I love that. And then the last part of it is you take it into their home and you give it a try. And there's nothing like the real thing, baby. There's nothing like seeing, you know, a wonderful piece of art in your space. Because the space will tell you. If yeah, you just listen right. to, you know, the, the light and the volume and the rhythm of the room and what's around it, the furnishings and all that, and then your client's personality, it'll tell you right off the bat. Well, if so, there's any takeaway that I get from all that, the space will tell you. The space, <laughs> the space will tell you. <laughs> the space will tell you. I mean, I could tell you to the last <laughs> but I pretty much know, you know, like, I know you. And, and so I'll tell you, but, but really the space, the space talk. So one of the things that we do do is we take the art out on approval and we get a chance to to see it and, okay. with it and play with it and you know move it to a couple of places here and there but when i go to my clients homes i can tell you i almost rearrange i <laughs> always rearrange something move the credenza move to the left move the potted plant to the you know here and all and then all of a sudden you, well, you edit <laughs> and you shift things a little bit and the tiniest little movements really can create sort of a dynamic dialogue yes. between all mm -hmm. the things and make it all work yeah make it all work so yeah. that's that's the, that's the that's fun thing. part of my job i i just love that so you know curating it's it's really um unique to the space to the client uh to their furnishings and truly to their environment. And then there's many other considerations. I mean, I could write a book on this. You know, light. And well, you should. The, the, yeah. <laughs> and the direction of the light, you know, um, sometimes, you know, things are best viewed in morning light. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. more the clients are there in the morning and they're not there during the afternoon and they come back and eat. Some things you want to enjoy during the evening and yes. you know your casual well, that's a great place point too. Yeah, it's a great time you know, of day. So will, is it, does, will that art be beautiful during maybe not natural light but maybe right. some uh, you know some kind of you know what kind of light. So it's just really important to just know your clients and your clients to know thine self and to be able to express how it is that they live within their spaces and then we can come in and really make it rock from from all of those perspectives with all that knowledge that's really great I, advice. I love that and you know my mind always goes with when we do our, our segments and right I'm just even thinking okay I read my newspaper on my iPad on my living room couch every day and you know the lights coming in where the morning light comes in is those front windows that's why i love it it's the sunniest part of my home in the morning and so my art is different yeah, there yeah. than it is dina you've been there later yeah. in the day and it's dark dark right 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 and you have to be there at the right just time of different day. times a day yeah so i want to leave you with something funny <clears throat> so i always like to put great art in bathrooms <laughs> so no my <laughs> so <laughs> think about when you're on the balcony <laughs> yeah. so you know as a young family you know when you have young kids and all that what 
the bathroom is really the only place in between the shower you you have some room. You know, <laughs> sometimes. You know, sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> so people are like, Sylvia, are you sure you want to put that fabulous piece in the bathroom? Like, yes, I'm sure. Because here I know 100% you're in a contained environment. It's not really big. It's in a great spot. It has great light because it's in a bathroom. And you have least I knew a few minutes where you could actually enjoy it all to yourself. <laughs> I love it. The whole thing. I so love the moral it. of the story is always put great art, art in the back. It. <laughs> it is it's such a personal and, and, oh and wonderful gosh. pleasure to, to be able to focus in on it while you're getting yourself ready to go. And it just it starts your day or in the middle of the day or whatever in such a beautiful way. I might have to pick something up. Uh, I think you may. I just <laughs> read all <laughs> our bathroom, bathroom and yes. I've got some yes. blank canvas walls. <laughs> something might need to come up with you I'm, not, I'm just planting the seed now. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Well, well, and it, it makes sense. It and, totally and now as I'm in any of your bathrooms, I'm going to look at your art. <laughs> at your art. <laughs> Sylvia can help you. I, I yeah. can definitely. In our bathroom, I'll just do an example. So. We had, I have an artist that I uh, collected who did figurative nudes mostly. So little little bitty ones that I collect, I have a bunch of. And so my kids, and I loved it. I love those figurative nudes and they're totally appropriate in the bathroom. You know? So my kids, would, when they were little, would always call it the all nudie all the time bathroom. <laughs> That's cute. That's yeah. cute. Is there anything else that we should know about the gallery or what you do here? Any final thoughts you'd like to share with our yeah, listeners? So, so I invite everyone to kind of come in to see not only our gallery, but to see other artful spaces because the more you see, the more you know, and the more that you can appreciate. A lot of people sometimes have this fear of spaces because we have this idea of like museums and their places of like, you know, higher learning. This is not about that at all. This is about, this is a space about personal and artful, you know, growth. And when you see things, you can say, you know, if everybody likes the same thing, we would have, we'd be pulling one thing out of the drawer. Yeah, okay? So we have thousands of pieces so. because everybody likes something different. And in our space, that's okay and that's good. And that's why we offer you so many different things where you, through your own uh, likes, um, can edit through them for yourself, but to see an actual manifestation of the it and, and to realize that every piece of art is something um, totally unique and it's the only one that, you know, even if the artist will try to do the same thing over again, it will never be the same thing. And they very rarely do. They always move, um, you know, a collection. As you see behind us, we have a collection of an artist that uh, does three-dimensional um, dress sculptures out of found objects. And even though he's using sometimes even the same, you know, like say bottle caps as an example back there, they're done in a different way. So each one looks totally yeah, different, yeah. you know. Never, but they two are never the same. Yeah. Never two are the same. Yeah. So, so I think, you know, to give yourselves the opportunity to experience a lot of variety and to kind of begin to hone in on what you love and it's okay to love what you love mm -hmm. you know we love what what we put in here so we pre-curate it for yes. you yes. and so then you know it's, it's the best that we can bring in and so we offer it to you to, to make edits out of and some you will really love some will not be your vibe and it's all okay so there you have it, everybody. It'll it'll all be okay, it's right? It's all good. <laughs> so can somebody just show up at the door? Yes. So somebody can just uh, show up at the door. We're okay. open uh, nine to five, okay. Monday through Friday, right. and I do a lot of um, appointments. Okay. Uh, okay. So certainly, okay. if you need a weekend appointment or you need to come in here and take a look, or you're working on a project that you just want to have the opportunity to just kind of go through and you know take your time and you know, maybe bring a designer with you, bring your spouse with you, uh, bring a friend with you, bring friends, lots of friends. Yeah. And, uh, and it is a party vibe in here too. It is yeah. a party. <laughs> and we do, we bring them in. We have lots of people that we bring in. We have a, a, a you know, beautiful art openings uh, and sometimes, you know, targeted for a specific artist where we show depth and breadth. And sometimes it's just a tremendous variety where we can have three, 400 pieces in here that are all by a different artist. So there's that kind of variety that is available, but just come on in. You know, we, we, uh, we've been doing this for a long time. Um, we embrace questions and, uh, you know, we also, you know, we'll try to find if there's uh, 
by the slim chance that there's you can't find what you like here, we'll find it for you. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I believe that. So thank you for joining us today. It's, it's a lot of great information. Our small business shout out goes to ADC Fine Art West today because yes. we are now in the West End. So come visit this glorious 13,000 square foot gallery and buy some art. Buy some art. For buy sure. some art. It's a good day for it. Well, thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Sylvia, thank you again for joining us today. Remember viewers, if you are staying or going, having a well-designed space is going to bring you joy to live in your home or help sell your home if you are planning to move in the future. So come on down to this 13,000 square foot gallery and peruse the gallery for just the right piece of art or to create an artful space within your home. Yeah, there's some beautiful things here, so come on down. But switching gears to Real Talk, Chris, yes. we're focusing on this historic area of Cincinnati referred to as the West End. And um, tell us a little bit about the geography. So yeah. what does this area encompass? You know, and we know that Dina and I love exploring the different areas of our city. And I know I've been to the West End, I guess, several times and never thought about it. It really well, is always in that OTR area. Uh, and it literally know? is across the street yeah, from, yeah, exactly. from OTR. So it really starts up at that Western Hills Viaduct. It kind of comes down the south, going all the way around Jig Jaggedy, around the Museum Center to include it. Jiggity Jaggedy. Jiggity Jaggedy. I like that. <laughs> down to West 6th Street and then follows 127 back up to that Western Hills Viaduct. So it makes a great little, not really a circle, but a little, an yeah. oval yeah. shape. Yeah. Um, just in the west part of our city. Yeah, exactly. And while most of us um, are aware of like the new FC Cincinnati yeah, Stadium yeah. that's down here, there are a few um, other things that you may not know about, um, such as the Bet House on the Bet's House mm -hmm. on Clark Street, and that is actually the oldest brick home in Ohio and the oldest home in Cincinnati, and it was built in 1804. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, pretty cool, um, and it, it's actually a museum now, so people can tour it and go through it and see all kinds of uh, tours and exhibits there. You know, another noteworthy find is another museum here, and that is the Cincinnati Fire Museum, and I'm told there are over 100 bars and restaurants. Um, one of the fun places to, to eat is called Ali's Trolley with their scrumptious barbecue and burgers and ribs and hot dogs and other good stuff, all served from a vintage red and yellow trolley car. Oh, wow, we should go there. Uh, yeah, yeah, we should. <laughs> that sounds really cool. And isn't it amazing? I mean, these things are here in our city, but sometimes we just don't get out of our little bubbles. Our little bubbles. Got to so, get out of our yeah, bubbles. It's great to, to explore new areas. Um, but it wouldn't be real estate real talk if we didn't touch on the housing market here in this area. And with a population of almost 7,000, housing is important here, just like it is anywhere else in our city. Um, many people are renters, but there's still quite a few owner-occupied homes. According to Niche, the medium home value is $190,505. Um, and, you know, the market is just very. So there's a, a lot of um, different pricing in this area and different types of homes in this area. And Chris, don't we know somebody that lives in this area? We do. One of our lender friends, Damon Davari of Guarantee Great Affinity, he moved to the West End 17 years ago. Oh my gosh. So he's been here for quite a while and he came because of the uniqueness and the pocket neighborhood of the Brownstones. And since he's been there here, it's obviously built up, but he still loves that walkability, um, the history, and also the architecture that he finds in the area. Yeah. Um, then having TQL built in his backyard yeah. has been like a bonus. Yeah, that's nice. And and 17 years, like that's fascinating to know that he, um, you know, found what he found in this area that long yeah. ago. He's not just one of these recent trend yeah, chasers, yeah. right? <laughs> early <laughs> so discoverer. Was early discoverer. That's pretty cool. Um, so in looking at the MLS mm -hmm. stats, um, there were seven active listings ranging in price from 124000 to 850,000. Wow. So again, there's huge yeah. variability there. The pendings um, were seven, uh, ranging from 235 to 449. And finally, in the last six months, 200 and 11, I'm sorry, in the last six months, 21. <laughs> 211. Not 211. That's in the whole city, right? 
<laughs> practically. 21 homes have sold in the last six months, ranging from 135 to 433. Wow. And what I find always fascinating, too, is that the age range of these homes that have been on the market or recently sold, you know, they range from the early 1800s all the way up to the early 2000s. So that really shows a lot of different character. Um, and, I, you know, a lot of the homes here are those road type houses yeah. and condominiums. Yeah. But I also found a ranch. So I, did, I just did, I don't know, I just didn't expect that. No, um, I wouldn't expect that either. That's not what you, yeah. You can certainly that. find just about anything. Yeah. Um, hey, now that the weather is changing for the better, come on down to the West End and discover this unique area. If you have an interest in pursuing a home here, Dina and I would love to help you. Or in one of our other areas of the Cincinnati market, you can reach us at Dina and Chris Real Talk at gmail.com. And we can have lunch at the trolley. At the, place, yeah, at least right? trolley. At least trolley. That would be great. So that's our show for today. A final shout out goes to ADC Fine Art um, here in the West End. Join us next time as we tackle spring cleaning and organization within our homes. We're going to have Tracy Carter joining us from Closets by Design. And we're excited to hear a lot of her tips. So thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, watch us on YouTube, subscribe, rate, and share. And like. Until next time, take care. Bye.